I love being able to do this on Excel. You can actually have your Outlook calendar with these are the appointments that I have between the 18th and 22nd of September. And I want to get that into table format. So here I can write in the dates. So 18 of September. Yes, this is in the future, but it still works. I've just put in these fake meetings. And then all you have to do is go into the data tab and refresh all. And there you go. It has now loaded all of these four meetings, which is pretty cool. It's even got the people I'm meeting with, and it's not perfect. It's got this kind of semicolon, but if you just want it very, very quickly in there for something like timesheets, it is absolutely fantastic. It's also got the day of the week, the start time, how long it lasts. So um, if you want just a copy of this file without having to build it yourself, and you can type in whatever email you want in this cell, then you will look in the description below and there is a link for how to get this exact file or you can just leave a comment on this video as well and we can talk about it on there. So my name is David and I'm gonna have tons of videos on Excel, Power BI, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. And by the way, this exact process can be done in Power BI as well as Excel because both of them use Power Query, which is what this is based on. As I said, if you just want this file, then leave a comment and check out the description for a link to this exact file. All right, so let's get started. So here I'm in a brand new workbook and in the data tab, I can get data from other sources and I have from Microsoft Exchange. This allows you to type in a work or education email address. So I'm just gonna paste it and then press okay. Choose which one you want. Calendar is the one I find most useful, but you can if you want to select the other one. So I'm going to go to transform data. So this opens up the Power Query Editor. And Power Query is a game-changing feature that Excel introduced around 10 years ago for grabbing data from different places and then reshaping it and reorganizing it. So I'm going to go through the steps that I would take. And if you've never used Power Query before, then you can still follow these steps. But I have another intro video that talks a lot about the power of Power Query. But let's do a kind of simplish one. Uh, I'm going to do the way that I find most useful, which is immediately go to choose columns, and then I'm going to choose subject, start, and display to, just those four. For example, you can see the folder path. This isn't going to be something that we need. The location doesn't really help me for my purpose, which is timesheets. I neither do things like attachments or categories or is reminder set. But of course, if you want to keep those columns, feel free to for your own needs. So I press OK, and then I get this. So immediately I want to know how long the meetings were. So I'm going to click on end, control, click on start. Then add column, go to time, and choose subtract. And this is showing me in minutes and hours, but I'm going to change it to decimals. And then I need to go to transform and standard multiply by 24 to get the number of hours. So here we can see it started at six, ended at 6.30, that's 0 0.5 hours, makes sense. So next I'm going to want to have in one column what the meeting was about. So I'm going to say meet with display two about subject, but I don't care about the ones with my name in it. So I'm going to click on this, I'm gonna choose transform and replace values. I'm going to replace my name with blank like this. Next, let's add a couple of custom columns. So for me, I want a column that just says my name so it can go into a timesheet that's for everyone else. So if I go to custom column, this one will be the easier one, but I'm just going to write in speech marks, David, I'm going to say name as the column name, and it will show like this. But I'm also going to do a custom column that says description, and always in speech marks when you do text in Excel or Power Query, meet with space and then and sign to join to a column. So meet with display two and speech marks about space speech marks again and again, because now we're joining to another column about subjects and then press OK. And it should show like that. Now, this is not going to be perfect. For example, sometimes you're going to have just semicolons, or sometimes you're not going to have anyone in the Me Too column. That's okay. You just need to be aware that that's how it might look, but it's enough to give you explanation of what's going on in that column. And for me, I've used this system for years and years and years. Uh, next, we're going to go to the start column, and we're going to split this into date and time. To an add column, I'm going to do date, and I'm going to choose date only. 
and then go back to it, date at time, and then time only. We can double click to rename them. So time can be start time. Date is probably enough. And subtraction, this can be duration. All right, now we're going to remove some of the columns that we don't need anymore. So I'm going to actually select the columns that I need in the order I want them. So I can say date, control, description, control, duration, control, name, control, time. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose remove other columns. And then we'll actually reorder them in the order that I clicked them in. So that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to press close and load. Great, and now it's loaded it to a new worksheet like this called Calendar, which is the name of the query. And if you want to, you can change just the, the type or things like that. It is loading it as, a, as an Excel branded table. So a um, couple of things. Um, firstly, I'm going to show you how to filter it starting and ending at a certain thing. So I'm going to create a table that says start and another one that says end. And this one, I'm going to go to insert table. My table is headers, press OK. And I'm going to rename this to start date. Excel tables are an awesome thing that's really, really underused. Uh, and in Power Query, they're really essential. So here I'm going to do the same in the Home tab. I can also go to Formats as Table and choose one that I like immediately. My table is headers. And I'm going to write in an, a date. So here I'm going to say, 5th of August. Now for these ones, I'm going to give them a special number format. The next thing we're going to do, and this is a little bit trickier, is to bring these into Power Query. So for this one, I'm going to go to data and get data from table or range. And then over here, I'm going to go into this date. I'm going to right click and I'm going to drill down, right click on the cell. And now it's just going to have this one. Next up in calendar, I'm going to go to date and then here, in the drop down, I'm going to say day filters is after. I need to write in a date here so I can choose a date picker and choose one that's relevant. So after that's done loading and it might take some a while, you then need to make sure that this isn't hard coded. So um, you have this formula bar. If you don't see it, you can go to the view tab and you can choose formula bar, tick that or untick it. And here, where it says greater than, we're actually going to replace this until the end of the first bracket with the name of our earlier query, which is dot date, like that. Make sure that it has no spaces, um, otherwise it makes it a little bit more difficult. Now this means it's given me an error, and that is because this start date is actually a date time field, whereas it's comparing it to a date field. So if I go back to start date, then what you need to do is in the transform tools, choose date and date only, and then go back here and you'll see that that icon comes back to working. Perfect. So now we've just got to do the same with end date. So close and load. It is actually going to, by default, create another worksheet just with start date. Obviously that's really, really useless because I'm not doing anything to it. So I can right click and I can choose delete. And then it keeps the query with a connection only, but deletes the outcome of it. I'm not going to show you how to do the end because that's pretty much exactly the same, but I'm going to show you a few more things. So here I've added a column for include, which has a drop down list that you can get to data and then data validation. But I've also color coded it so that if you choose no, then the whole row goes orange. And if you want to change the color of a cell based on a criteria, you can go to the home tab, you can go to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, and then text that contains. And then I can say, for example, yes, we'll change with green. Press OK. Now, whenever I type in the word yes, it will change to that color automatically. If you want to do it for the whole row, then I have another video that explains how to do that that I'll link to in the description below. But for now, let's delete these. The reason I do this is because I want to be able to filter it for all the yeses later on and then copy and paste those into my timesheet. But it's completely optional, of course, depending on your situation. So I'm going to insert and put in a title calendar here and then I'm going to grab this email down here. I've already made control X, control V. And now I'm going to make a dynamic based on the email that someone provides. I have already renamed this table to email. 
and I'm going to go to the data tab and choose from table arrange. Then over here, I'm going to right click in the cell and drill down, same as before. And now it's become that. In calendar, my main query, if I go back to the source data up here, it starts by hard coding my email address. But if I want to make this dynamic, all I have to do is delete it and type in email. And that is email because it's the name of the query that has my dynamic email address. There you go. And now if I go to the last query and was to do refresh preview, it would bring out these three that I need. But another step is I want to exclude something on a weekend on like a Sunday. So I'm going to click on the day column, go to add column and date and day. And I'm going to choose name of day. And then I'm going to click on this and transform and extract first characters. I only need the first three characters because that's enough to know the name of the date. And then I'm going to do day here. And then if you really want to, you can click on the filter and you can untick Sunday or also untick Saturday if that's what you want. And now it will filter out those days like that as well. By the way, if you want to undo any step in Power Query, you can just click on X if I don't want that to happen. And I want to keep the Sunday stuff. So like before, it's going to create a new worksheet for email and one row loaded. I don't want that, so I'm going to delete it. And I will delete the loading page, but not the query. You can always right click and choose load two if you want to reload the query. But in this case, we don't need it because it's just basically this. So um, just to show you, people can't access and refresh it unless they are logged in as you. In the data tab and get data and then data source settings, in global permissions, I can just go to the one that's my email. And if I clear permissions and delete it and then press close, and now I try to refresh all. So this is what will happen if you're trying to refresh with someone else's email address, it will load up the screen. If you want to re-sign in, go to Microsoft account and click sign in. Note that signing in here is different to signing into your entire Excel. And then as long as you're logged in correctly, you should be able to click on that one and then press connect. Great, and that's how you can do it and sign in and refresh. So my name is Daniel Brunheim and I have tons of videos on Excel, Power BI, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm coming on my channel. And by the way, this exact same process works also in Power BI because Power Query is a sub component of Excel and Power BI all the same. The only difference is how you get these things in. In Power BI, it would be through parameters rather than typing in into cells because you don't have input cells in Power BI. But apart from a small change like that, and actually it's easier in Power BI, uh, it's pretty straightforward and pretty much the same. Thanks for watching.